Good day everyone! In this video, I, John Romero Aitona, and my partner Andre Amparo, in behalf of Group 3, 3T2, will discuss the case of the Bank of the Philippine Islands versus Norman and Angelina Yu, dated January 20, 2010, with a GR number of 184122. So the parties involved BPI as the petitioner, and Norman and Angelina Yu, owner of Twanson Trading and Twanson Builders Corporation, as the respondent. So here's the table of contents. We'll be discussing the facts and the case, the issues presented, and the court rulings, and lastly, the conclusion of the case. So this case is about the propriety of summary judgment in resolving a documented claim of alleged excessive penalty charges, interest, attorney's fees, and foreclosure expenses imposed in an extrajudicial foreclosure of mortgage. Respondents Norman and Angelina Yu doing business as Twanson Trading and Twanson Builders borrowed various sums totaling 75 million pesos from Far East Bank and Trust Company. For collateral, they executed real estate mortgage over several of their properties. In 1999, unable to pay their loans, the Yu's and Twanson Builders requested a loan restructuring which the bank now merged with the BPI. Despite the restructuring, however, the U.S. still had difficulties paying their loan. They asked BPI to release some of the mortgage lands since their total appraised value far exceeded the amount of the remaining debt. When BPI ignored their request, the U.S. withheld payments on their amortization. Then BPI extrajudicially foreclosed the mortgage properties in Legazpi City and in Camarines Sur. The U.S. sought by court action against BPI and the winning bidder, Magnecraft, the annulment of the foreclosure sale. First, the bank imposed excessive penalty charges and interest over 5 million pesos in penalty charges computed at 36% per annum. In addition, BPI collected a 14% yearly interest on the principal, bringing the combined penalty charges and interest to 50% of the principal per annum. BPI also imposed a charge of 4,052,046.11 pesos in attorney's fees, the equivalent of 10% of the principal interest and penalty charges. So BPI did not provide documents to support its claim for foreclosure expenses of 446,726.74 pesos and cost of publication of 518,059.21 pesos. As alternative to their three cost causes of action, the use claimed that the BPI was insolvent to claim more than the amount stated in its published notices. Consequently, it must turn over the excess bid of 6,035,311.46 pesos. For the issues presented, whether or not the case presented is no genuine issues of fact such as to warrant a summary judgment by the RTC, whether or not the RTC and the CAA correctly deleted the penalty charges because of BPI's alleged failure to comply with the Truth in Lending Act, B correctly reduced the attorney's fees to 1% of the judgment debt and properly dismissed BPI's counterclaims for moral and exemplary damages, attorney's fees, and litigation expenses. The question is whether or not the reference to the penalty charges in the promissory note constitutes substantial compliance with the disclosure requirement of the Truth in Lending Act. In the court rulings to resolve the issues of the excessive charges allegedly incorporated into the auction bid price, the RTC simply had to look at the pleadings of the parties, the loan agreements, the promissory notes, and the real estate mortgages between them. The foreclosure and bidding documents and the admissions and other disclosures between the parties during pre-trial since the parties admitted not only the existence, authenticity, and genuine execution of these documents, but also what they stated, the trial court did not need to hold a trial for the reception of the evidence of the parties. BPI contends that the summary judgment was not proper given the following issues that the parties raised whether or not the loan agreements between them were valid and enforceable, whether or not the use have a cause of action against BPI, whether or not the use are proper parties in interest, whether or not the use are stopped, 
from questioning the foreclosure proceeding after entering into a compromise agreement with Manicraft, whether or not the penalty charges and fees and expenses of litigation and publication are excessive, and whether or not the BPI violated the Truth in Lending Act. The Conclusion of the Case the court has affirmed that financial charges are amply disclosed if stated in the promissory note in the case of Development Bank of the Philippines versus Arcelia Junior. The court there said, under Circular 158 of the Central Bank, the lender is required to include the information required by RA 3765 in the contract covering the credit transaction by any other document to be acknowledged and signed by the borrower. In addition, the contract or document shall specify additional charges, if any, which will be collected in case certain stipulations in the contract are not met by the debtor. In this case, the promissory notes signed by the use contain data, including penalty charges required by the Truth in Lending Act. They cannot avoid the liability based on a rigid interpretation of the Truth in Lending Act that contravenes its scope. The court denies the petition and affirms the Court of Appeals' decision in CA GRCV 86577 dated January 23, 2008, subject to the restoration of the penalty charge of 12% per annum or 1% per month of the amount due computed from the date of non-payment or November 25, 2001.